Give us your perspective now. How does this compare with that world when we saw last March? How is it similar? How is it different? Well, last March and April, you saw really it concentrated in the Northeast and it was more sporadic. Now you're seeing this across the entire country, uh, which is worrisome in terms of how stretched we're going to be, particularly on issues like staffing. Recall that when New York went through this crisis, we received help from around the country, uh, staffing help from around the country. That's not going to be uh, available for many of the health systems now because we're seeing it across the entire country. Testing and testing reagents are going to be stretched uh, as well. Uh, so I think that it's, it's, it's somewhat different. Now, having said that, the demography is, is more favorable. Younger people tend to do better than older people. Uh, the mortality is less. The number of people requiring ventilators uh, throughout the country is less than when we first saw it and, and, uh, in both the March and April timeframe uh, and in the July-August timeframe in the, in the Southwest. So those are uh, somewhat comforting. I do think that uh, despite all the rhetoric around mask wearing and so on, the people paying attention to mask wearing, social distancing uh, has helped. So I think we're in somewhat better shape, but there are different challenges this go around. What kind of surges are you seeing in your hospital center uh, as a practical matter for uh, hospitalizations? So at the, at the nadir, we were at about 2% of our peak. Uh, now we're at about 10 to 15% of our peak, uh, and we expect it to go up to about 25% of the peak, depending on exactly what happens over the Thanksgiving holiday and then, of course, uh, Christmas time. So... We are preparing for it. Uh, we do have adequate ventilators. We do have adequate masks, PPE, et cetera. We do worry about uh, the uh, number of reagents that we will have uh, for adequate testing. Uh, but I feel that we're in better shape than March and April. And we're hopeful that it will be uh, less strenuous than March and April for sure. And look, we have the uh, the, the likelihood of uh, the vaccines uh, not only being approved, but uh, starting to be distributed at the end of December and January, and then hopefully ramping up by the uh, April-May timeframe. So you can see the goal line in sight if we can just get through the next few months. Well, okay, to follow that analogy, you see the goal line. The question is, how do we not fumble the ball in the meantime? Because there's some people who feel tired about wearing those masks you said help and social distancing. How long do we have to keep that up in your estimation before we really have effective protection from the vaccine? A few months. I think you're looking at the rest of November, December, January into February. Hopefully, in the February, March timeframe, you're starting to see widespread availability of the vaccine. And, and David, if I could put a plug in, we must insist on mass vaccination. The pain that we've gone through as a country, the deaths that we've had, the effect on so many different industries and businesses, we've got to insist on mass vaccination. We've got to make sure that we educate our population about it. I tell you, I would be the first in line for either the Pfizer or the Moderna vaccine. Uh, I think it's been a remarkable accomplishment. And with all of the negatives about how the administration has handled this, uh, I think that Operation Warp Speed was a success. And the private sector really stepped up here uh, in a major way. This is the shortest time to get a vaccine uh, in, the, in the history of vaccines. It, it is really a remarkable scientific accomplishment.